Yes, hello again and uh, welcome back once more to your favourite classic dirt bike TV YouTube channel where we uh, try and rediscover some more of those old school scramblers from uh, way back in the day. Now this coming weekend was supposed to be uh, the weekend that we headed south to cover that uh, West Moreland Motor Club's uh, two-day event and, uh, at Kendall but unfortunately uh, we can no longer attend that event due to myself having uh, taken a positive test for uh, COVID so uh, we thought it best uh, just to give that event a miss and uh, we are now confined to uh, Classic Dirt Bike HQ for the next uh, week or so but uh, there will be uh, other big events that we will be uh, following in the coming uh, year so uh, make sure you still subscribe to my channel in order that you don't miss out on any of those further uh, big events here on uh, Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV. So apologies if you were looking forward to seeing all the bikes and the racing uh, footage from that weekend. But uh, as a quick consolation prize, we're going to go back now to the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show and we're going to take a look at a bike that I came across uh, during my travels at the 2022 Telford Show and uh, we're going to dive straight into the video now and take a look at this lovely 1978 uh, Fregerio Puch 250. Okay, so as I uh, said, this bike was another of the many great machines that I spotted at the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show in February of that year. And this featured bike here was tucked away in the corner of one of the vendor's stalls who was uh, actually selling uh, this bike and uh, some other motorcycle uh, parts. And so I asked him if he could just uh, maybe dig the bike out uh, so that we could get a better uh, look at it. So anyway, as it turns out, uh, this is uh, what looks like a very good original uh, 1978 Frigerio Puch 250. And uh, the seller uh, was also offering uh, this bike up for sale uh, on the day for a price of £4,350. Uh, well, well, I assume it was uh, pounds and not uh, euros, although uh, despite the language barrier between the two of us, the, the information that I did manage to get from the vendor was that uh, this was essentially a pretty good original bike from way back in the day. Now, if my memory still uh, serves me correctly, I think uh, Frigerio were the Italian importers of these uh, Puch motocrossers. And although uh, the chassis was uh, more or less made by Puch, the motor again uh, was powered by an Austrian-made Rotax 250 uh, two-stroke uh, power plant. And back in 1978, uh, you could buy a 125, a 175, a 250 or even a 350 version of this bike and uh, they even made an enduro version of these uh, Frigerio uh, Pooks as well at one time so uh, there were a decent array of different models of these bikes to choose from in that year. But with regards to the uh, bike's power plant it was a well proven 250 two-stroke Austrian made Rotax engine and this particular motor here had that uh, quite radical rotating fiber disc valve induction system on the left hand side of the motor's uh, crankcase where a rotating fiber disc on the end of the crank would uh, rotate past an opening in the crankcase causing uh, suction to then uh, take the fuel and air mixture into uh, the crankcase uh, from that uh, carburetor that's mounted on the left hand side but essentially it was a tried and tested system which uh, apparently worked quite well and it was very uh, reliable and uh, as i recall the uh, japanese yamaha manufacturers uh, used a similar setup uh, on their smaller yamaha road bikes of the late 1970s because uh, as i remember as a as a younger man my uh, little yb100 yamaha uh, was being powered by a similar uh, intake fuel system. Although I have to admit that these uh, Frigerio books are not really a machine 
that I'm uh, too familiar with and uh, as a UK resident back in the 1970s era, I can't uh, really remember ever seeing one of these Italian uh, Frigerio books on the UK racetracks of that time, although uh, I'll wager that if you did attend any local Italian scrambles in 1978, I'll bet that there were copious amounts of these machines uh, taking part, because uh, not all uh, European motocross bikes ever made it to the UK, surprisingly, and many of these locally produced models uh, tended to stay in and around uh, where they were uh, manufactured, and you only really got to hear about these kind of bikes if there was something uh, really special and the bike builders uh, were looking for sales in the UK. But at uh, first glance, the bike uh, certainly looks like it would be uh, reasonably quick on the racetrack because it did have a, a light tubular steel uh, chassis and a compact two-stroke 250 uh, motor. And many of the bike's parts, including uh, this exhaust system, uh, still look like uh, the stock parts from uh, that 1978 year. Now, naturally, because this was a locally produced Italian motorcycle, there are many Italian influences in its construction, including these Marzocchi uh, triple clamps and, of course, uh, the front uh, forks. Now, as you know, for the 1970s, Marzocchi uh, were building suspension systems for all manner of off-road motorcycle uh, manufacturers during that uh, 1970s and early 80s uh, period and although uh, they were maybe not uh, the best suspension systems uh, for their time it's uh, very easy to just uh, knock these older uh, suspension systems when we know now that we have uh, such good uh, suspension systems here in 2022 but these Marzocchis were still uh, good enough that uh, motocross bike manufacturers bought them in their thousands and uh, as I remember uh, the British made cotton EMC bike from around 1979 and 1980 had these very same uh, Marzocchi suspension systems fitted to them as a stock uh, item. And so as we move on to the rear of the machine, now these YSS uh, rear shocks are of course uh, not the original fitments for this bike from that uh, 1978 year and I'm almost 99% uh, sure that the back of this bike uh, would have again had a pair of Italian Marzocchis uh, bolted onto it in 1978. But again you can see that very shallow uh, laid down angle of the rear suspension units of this uh, Frigerio bike which again was uh, very typical of that 1970s twin shock era. Now once more, uh, again I'm uh, pretty sure that the bike's fuel tank is an uh, alloy unit in keeping uh, with the light weight of that tubular chassis and that small compact two-stroke engine and this uh, fuel cell here still has the old school uh, champion spark plugs sticker on it which is uh, quite a rare item from uh, long ago but uh, you have to uh, say again it uh, all looks 100% uh, original and it certainly doesn't look like uh, this tank's ever been painted or restored at any time in its life but uh, it certainly fits in well with the rest of this uh, very light uh, 250 uh, machine. And the bike's uh, seat once again looks uh, the real deal from that year and uh, it sure looks like uh, these Frigerios uh, certainly had a very nice comfy place uh, to lay your backside down on when uh, you were mounted on uh, one of their Italian uh, machines. Although I have to say that uh, maybe apart from the bike not having the original rear shocks on the back of this machine, most of the other parts, including uh, these wheels and hubs, all certainly look like they're the bike's uh, stock fittings from that year. So it's certainly looking like this is uh, for sure a genuine old uh, racer from 1978. 
And once again, the bike's controls all look like uh, they are Magura grips and uh, levers and even those handlebars certainly look like the kind of uh, bars that would have been fitted to this bike in 1978 with that welded crossbar rather than the more modern method of bolting it on uh, to the bars. And again, uh, I'll wager that uh, the throttle gasser is an Italian uh, Tomaselli part as uh, Tomaselli did make uh, different parts for many Italian off-roaders uh, during that late uh, 1970s period. And uh, even the bike's plastics uh, look like the original items and they're still in uh, great condition uh, for a bike that's uh, heading on to more than 40 years uh, old now. But whether the actual seller on the day did get his uh, £4,350 asking price uh, for this bike, I'm not uh, entirely sure, but it would certainly have been a good little uh, race bike for somebody if that price uh, was a little more uh, negotiable because, uh, as I said, apart from the rear shocks, this still looks like an honest original machine that doesn't appear to have had too much in terms of uh, track action and uh, because it is uh, stock it would certainly even make a great bike just to add to uh, someone's uh, collection but here in the UK uh, you'll be very hard pressed to see any of these Fregerio Pooks in and around the racing paddocks as you just don't see them uh, these days although I do know of a few that are in uh, private collections but these are all uh, basically show bikes and not uh, being used for racing. Now, as far as I'm aware, Fregerio are still in operation in Italy and they are still a good source of information with regards to these old uh, Puch scramblers and even uh, Gilera motorcycles as well. Although uh, back in 1978, Fregerio were not just importers of these Puch bikes, but they also built and prepped them uh, for racing, so they were basically a one-stop uh, shop in that uh, respect. But this little gem of a bike is just one of the many machines that were on display uh, or for sale at this year's Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show, and if you're on the lookout for a certain bike at a certain price, then often uh, this show can uh, be the place uh, to find it. If, of course, uh, the price is right, that is. Well, there you have it. I do hope uh, you enjoyed that uh, walk around. What is quite a rare uh, 1978 uh, Fregerio Puch 250. Uh, certainly a bike that you don't see here in the UK, but of course back in the late 1970s, uh, these, these Fregerio Puchs were extremely popular in their native Italy. So as I said, because of my recent positive test for COVID, I'm uh, kind of confined to uh, Classic Dirt Bike HQ for the next week or so. So during that time, we're going to dig out some more uh, bikes from the uh, Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show 2022 until we can get out and about uh, once again. So when we return, we're going to take a look at this uh, quite nice looking and original uh, 1983 uh, Kajiva 125WMX and this is another one of the bikes that was hiding in a corner of the show so uh, we'll be taking a much closer look at this lovely machine when we return uh, here on my channel but until then of course everybody continue to stay COVID free and uh, we'd like to see you back here again very soon so we can all talk about more uh, vintage iron right here on your number one and favourite Classic Dirt Bike TV channel.